Hello, everyone. Chris is Santiago with MMA Island. Today, I'm talking to the 2019 Shamrock FC Fighter of the Year, the Ultimate Fighter 29 contestant, and rising star Dustin Scrappy Lampros. Dustin, how's it going today? Hey, Chris. It's going great. Uh, thanks for having me on. Mm -hmm. For sure, for sure. You're going to be facing off at Shamrock FC 333. How's, uh, how's everything feeling headed into this one? Uh, going good. I mean, for taking a fight, you know, on less than two weeks notice, uh, this is the first time I've ever done it. So for me, uh, it's kind of, it's exciting and, you know, it's a good stress test, you know, to see how I react, you know, with less than two weeks notice. But, um, you know, I'm always in the gym training, so uh, I'm usually always ready. So it's usually more about a weight, you know, that it would be taking a short notice fight. And uh, thankfully, I got asked to fight at 150 pounds, so it's Ooh, a nice, nice catch weight for him. So I'm excited. Mm, for sure, for sure. And how's everything uh, been at Sanford ever since the Ultimate Fighter? Um, I mean, it's been good. I mean, nothing, nothing really uh, changed, you know. I mean, we, uh, you know, I, I talked with one of my coaches. You know, obviously they saw the the fight, and uh, you know, they addressed it. You know, what they thought needed to be fixed in it. You know, and simple. You know, I got caught. You know, like, so. I mean, there wasn't a whole lot, you know, to work on besides the fact that I need to keep my hands up if, you know, I'm such a, you know, pressure style fighter that, uh, you know, I got to I got to be ready for that, for those type of, uh, you know, panic punching moments, because, you know, usually if, uh, if I am going to get hit or clipped, it's from someone, you know, reacting to my pressure. But, uh, you know, nothing's really changed so much at Sanford, though. Everything's been pretty good there. Mm -hmm. And if you could describe the ultimate fighter experience in a couple of words, like what would it be? Like, what did it mean for you to be on such a star started cast that is the ultimate fighter 29? It was a dream crew. I mean, simple as that there, you know, I've, uh, I found out about the UFC and MMA as a sport, um, you know, through the ultimate fighter. And for me to get to experience that and get to go on that, was you know kind of surreal you know when i when i first heard that it was a possibility like you know all these thoughts started going to my head i was freaking out I was like no way this could happen at the same happen like this is meant to be you know it's perfect for me uh you know it just it, everything aligned all the stars aligned for it and uh it was a great experience and it, it meant the world to me Mm -hmm. And that's awesome to hear. And obviously, you know, uh, with that first fight, it didn't go your way. But, you know, when you see a guy like Brendan Moreno, who was a, the lowest seed on the Ultimate Fighter of his season on the Ultimate Fighter 24, and to see him lose on that first episode and to see him, you know, go to the UFC and become champion, does, does a story like Brendan Moreno's, like, inspire you to, like, go, go that distance? Yeah, of course. Uh, I mean, it's amazing, you know. To go from where, like you said, he was at to, to where he's at now is uh, incredible and definitely inspiring. I mean, for me to, you know, to be on there alone is an accomplishment. And yeah, unfortunately, it didn't go my way. But, you know, I took a lot of good things away from that fight and that moment and that experience that I honestly think, uh, you know, was meant to be. Looking back at it, at, you know, with months to think about it and really uh to understand the whole situation i think it might have been the best thing that could have happened to me you know go going into it i was undefeated you know i had one fight that went to the second round everybody else you know i finished under two minutes so getting to go in there with a, a ufc caliber guy and getting to test myself and you know for me i felt like i was at least had the upper hand up until the moment he caught me so uh, you know, I, I took a lot of good things away from it. And I think, uh, you know, it was it was meant to be. And I, th I think the story, you know, looking at Brandon Moreno's story, you know, gives me hope and gives me extra motivation knowing that, hey, you know what? I might have, uh, you know, fell short that time, but it doesn't mean anything. You know, the sky's mm -hmm. the limit. And, great, you know, blessed for me. Like, I'm blessed because the fight doesn't go on my record. So I technically don't have a loss, you know, my professional record, even mm -hmm. though obviously I got beat by another professional fighter. Um, but that's the blessing of the show, you know, and obviously it's not like a regular fight. There's so much leading up to it that you don't have to deal with um, for any other normal type of fight, you know. So, 
yeah, you know, like Brandon Moreno's story definitely uh, gives me, you know, encouragement to keep moving forward. Mm-hmm. And your story takes another chapter uh, this weekend at uh, Shamrock FC 333. What can we expect to see in this next ch- chapter? I mean, it's, you know, I, I'm, I don't know if I've ever been the person that believes in the whole, like, 2.0, you know, like, uh-huh. oh, this is, I, I don't know if I would say this is going to be scrappy 2.0, but, uh, you know, I'm just going to take the lesson I learned from the show and, you know, the experience, you know, the, and the skills I've gained in the past two years since I've been at Shamrock. You know, my last fight was November 1st of 19, and, you know, I had 18 months off before that fight on the show, mm-hmm. you know, so that was, a, that was the longest I've ever had a layoff, and which I felt amazing on the on the, the night of the fight or the day of the fight. But, uh, you know, getting to step back in there with some fans and back to where what has got me to this point, it's, it's going to be cool. It's a good feeling. You know, I don't I don't mind fighting on the regional scene and keep building myself and keep learning. And, you know, so for me, I just want to get out there and continue to get better and conti- continue to build myself. You know, it's not me versus these local guys. It's me versus me. I, I can care less about what what anybody else does or what they do with their careers. This is all about me. And, you know, at Shamrock FC 333 this Saturday uh, at the Maristar Casino, you're going to see me out there having a blast, you know, doing what I love in front of friends and family and hopefully come out with my hand raised. And, you know, I don't see it uh, ending any other way than that. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, and, you know, we all know that you're the anytime, anywhere kind of fighter, you know, taking this fight on two weeks notice. I believe there's already been like what one, two fighters pull out from this fight. Uh, who's your next opponent and uh, what do you think of him? Um, I, His name is Alberto Sergio Robos. I, I don't know a whole lot about him, you know, mm-hmm. uh, in the tough, um, but hey. It doesn't matter. I'm going to I'm going to come out there. I'm going to do what Scrappy does and I'm going to put on a show. I mean, there's a reason, uh, you know, why people like seeing me fight. And, you know, there's a reason why I've been in the positions I've been in. You know, I, I, I laid on line. I've uh, you know, I've sacrificed a lot for the sport, you know. So, you know, the, I have a lot of sacrifices that I've made to get to where I'm at. And I'm going to continue to do the same thing that I've done for the past couple of years and just you know stay the uh, course stay focused and keep grinding and getting better mm-hmm. Simple for, sure. As that. for sure for sure then you know your record is five and no all finishes most of them coming in the first round uh what's your mystic mac prediction for how scrappy gets this one done um i think i'm gonna come out there i'm gonna touch him up and if i don't uh put him down with some shots i think he's gonna shoot on me desperately and i'm just gonna stuff it and I'm going to put them away. I mean, it's going to, it's either going to be a TKO or a, or a submission victory. And if I have to say, if I, if it does go for a submission victory, I think I could hit the Peruvian necktie. I've been, I've been working Ooh, on it. Nice. Let's throw that out there in case it happens. So we can <laughs> rerun. Yeah, for but, sure. For sure. I, the Peruvian necktie would be, uh, would be the key way to finish the fight. You know, it's just exciting. It's uh, just showing more, of my skills and what I have in the arsenal, you know? Mm-hmm. And speaking of submission skills, you know, we saw Ortega almost pull off uh, a victory against Volkanovski. Uh, you know, your team, Volkanovski, what did you think about that war that, you know, one of the best fights of 2021? Crazy. I mean, I, I was worried for a little bit. I mean, th- there's something about Volkanovski when you're around him and you meet him that uh, it's just, it's just a different level, you know, and up here, it's not even, just he's you know so yeah I was a little nervous for him because I know Brian Ortega is a gangster like that and can pull off some crazy submission especially a, a guillotine but uh man there it, it was that that moment where it's like he's either gonna tap or he's gonna get out and I had I had the feeling that he's getting out I was like no way he's losing it like this like I just I <laughs> In around Volk for six weeks, like the guy is <laughs> such a beast, like such a gangster, and like I couldn't imagine him uh, tap into that. I think I, I personally think he would have let himself go to sleep before he would have tapped. I mean, that's how that's the type of energy he gives me. He doesn't seem like someone who's gonna say, "I'm done." You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, so that was that was nuts when Ortega. I mean, that that's how you go for it though. Like 
for any fighter that ever, you know, is learning and like myself, everyone, we all should take notes from that. Like you're getting beat up like that. That's how you go for Hail Marys. That's how you go. Oh for, yeah. You know, for sure. like he doesn't fold. He doesn't, he doesn't sit there and quit. Like he kept fighting until he couldn't, you know, and that's, that right there is, says a lot about Ortega. You know, he, you know, it was almost like my boy Rosa with the spinning elbow. Like, you know, you know what, Lo, or Rosa might not have ever, you know, had two wins back to back in his fights, you know, or win, loss, win, loss. But I'll tell you one thing, every single fight, if you ever seen that dude fold, not a chance. He doesn't, you know, mm-hmm. the ref might stop. He never tapped. He never tapped. He doesn't never, know how to tap. Yeah. Like, listen, Charles, you know, just another example you know of that mentality and i think that's what you need to be a champion like uh volkanovsky is and that's why i think when uh ortega had that i had that feeling that you know what volk ain't gonna it ain't over you know but i will give it i will say (laughs) i was a little bit i was a little little like i think i stood up i think i might have stood up off that one yeah such a great uh, fight fight. what 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 a war bro that was man this show that it was so cool i had so much stuff on that show chris that like leading up to it that was just a lot of bullshit that i've never you know vegas the the air like being dry like couldn't sweat i, I broke out with cold sweat. a lot of little shit that no one knows about and first time i've ever talked about it publicly with you um you know they fighting with my contacts out no one knows you know what i mean like uh-huh. I, in vegas, and a smaller I, cage as well right yeah and what in the smaller cage, right? In the, uh, in the apex? I'm used to that. Shamrock FC's cage is pretty small. So that wasn't – and it didn't seem too small. It was bigger than Shamrock's. It was like, you know, whatever. But just a lot of – but there's a lot of stuff that all of us fighters dealt with during quarantine leading up to it. Um, you know, and it was just a whole – the whole experience itself, I had so many, like, shit that made me, like, pissed off. And, like, it's mm-hmm. funny. Bulk and and the whole coaching staff for the first week thought I didn't like them. They Whoa. swore, they're like, yo, this kid does not want to be on our team. And I, ne- I had no idea that they were thinking <laughs> like that. I never for one, like one second thought I was giving that uh, vibe off, but that's how like locked in I was and how like I was focused on all the bullshit and like trying to just stay, bro, I was, you know, I was, I was there to win it, you know, but uh, that experience was, was life changing. You know, I, I couldn't, uh, ask for anything more and i think the experience i learned from it is going to carry me on to bigger and better things for sure wow yeah i, I totally didn't know that and with volkanovsky like did you guys have a have to have a conversation like explaining like what happened like how did you guys how did you guys uh, clear that up as far as what oh it's like uh you know he, him and his team thought you want, didn't want to be on his team oh, like uh, no. no 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 so it was after the whole the fin- it was like I didn't know any of that until the day after the show when I went out with Volkanowski and and uh, a couple of the other guys we went out you know to some uh clubs or like restaurant like places we went out after you know to the casino we went out to different places and we we're walking in uh, the parking garage and we're going to one of the uh going to uh Volkanowski's uh car and he goes yes yeah, scrap he goes uh not gonna lie we didn't know we didn't know if you liked us the- we thought you didn't like us <laughs> I was like, what? Like, <laughs> I will say, that not that I cared which team. I did think I was going to be on Ortega's team, though, because Ortega, Ortega's management hit me up before the show and said he's going to oh, upgrade. Pick yeah. Yeah. It hit me up and said, hey, he's going to he's gonna grab you if Volk doesn't. So I found out and I talked to Ortega after, like, I was number two pick on both of their list. So it just would have been on, yeah, whoever uh, got – the first or second pick for 35ers that's how it would have been but uh honestly i think it was better that i was on volkanowski's team uh volkanowski you know nothing to do i mean obviously him being a champ there's nothing better than being around someone you want to where you want to get nothing nothing's better than being around someone where you want to be you know where they're at you know i want to be champion so it's good to be around him but nothing to do with him exactly being a champion but his style of fighting yeah and his mm-hmm. build it's like, it's like, you know, we were like, you know, if you see that picture we posted, like we're, we're pretty similar in build, you know, obviously he's way, he's stronger. I mean, I can't even compare that, but I'm saying like inside, like if you look at us, you know, when I'm, when I'm, uh, 
nice and fat and not cutting weight we kind of look <laughs> around the same you know so so yeah like it was good to learn from Volkanovski you know I got to learn all the little details that uh that he you know all his secrets you know he, he shared he probably didn't share all of them but he sure he shared you know some good stuff with uh the guys and it, it was a blessing bro it was a true blessing to be part of his team Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, what, what do you think about Volkanovski going bald for his fight against Ortega? Like, would you do something like that in the future? Or, like, you know, do you like well, your bro, hair the way it is? So, <laughs> it's funny. My whole life, until I was 19 or 20, I was a bald buzz cut. If you huh. look at my old photos, if you slide down, look at my old Instagram, you'll see it. A lot of my old pictures. Yeah, all my fight, amateur fights, I had a shaved head. Uh, besides when I went down to Florida, my first three amateur fights, I should say. But uh, maybe one day, yeah, I have a good, like, shaved head, I think. So it actually probably looks better than my hair. But since moving to Florida, you know, I, I try to, like, I don't know, get that Florida look. So try, just yeah. try to fit in. <laughs> it's kind of, yeah, our, our haircuts are kind of similar. I just got this one before yeah, Bellator. Or... Like, a little fade, you know, something. But I never knew a cool hairstyle. So in high school, I was just zzz, zzz, every other day. You know, and then I'm like, oh, shit, I have nice hair. Like, I could actually do something with it. Uh-huh, for sure, for sure. Who has the best hair in MMA? Is it Sugar Sean O'Malley, or is it, like, a Clay Guida? Like, or is it, like, the mole of Ricky Samoa? Like, who's got the best hairstyle in MMA? Oh, bro, I don't know if I'm the right person to answer that. Um, I mean, shoot, may maybe Ortega, honestly. Mm. I mean, Bother Ortega or, or like the long hair, the the long yeah. mane of Ortega? Got some hair, you know. You, you probably had I, – I, the only reason I say that is because when I – we got our haircuts uh, like at the same time on the show and we were sitting next to each other or like, I don't know, we were sitting there talking while he got his cut and I, or I got mine cut. And uh, I just remembered uh, – I think he like does something real like, I don't know, puts it back or I don't remember but <laughs> I don't know I don't really know who would have the best hair it's kind of it's nothing I've ever thought of thought about <laughs> <laughs> gotcha man yeah you know me with the, the weird not questions <laughs> no, not, you know I'm like who's got some nice hair and fighting I don't know uh, maybe like a Dominic Crew. I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> gotcha. Me, but I'm, yeah, I'm that's right. a map us, obviously. Nice. And then, uh, you know, yeah. I, I want to talk a little bit about Supreme Patty. You know, you were in his corner for the last two uh, boxing fights. Uh, what can you say about his growth in the sport and him taking on opponents uh, like uh, Dan Ru and then uh, his last fight against, uh, I think it was against Gabbana or, or somebody like that? Like, what can you say about his growth in boxing? John work, yeah. What can you say about working with him throughout this process? I mean, yo, he, like, to be honest, like, not saying this because, you know, he's, like, one of my best friends or whatever. The kid's a gangster. You know, Patty's a gangster, bro. He, he gets in there and does it. Like, he – listen, that, like, look, I'll tell you something before I tell you this. One time we went out, and we went out to, like, this club with, like, a group of us and it's for our buddies our buddy's birthday and this and we went out to this place called salt seven where i used to bounce in florida in delray beach and i knew i know a lot of people there and i walked in and two of the uh the bartenders are are my friends and we walk in i, I walk up to the bar and i'm like yo what's up and like out of nowhere i'm wearing a hoodie like this some dude grabs me from behind my hood and swings me and like I hit my head on the ground I like like I have no oh my idea gosh. I like this I have no <laughs> idea and I look over and Patty has this guy in a full on rear naked choke in the middle of the club choking him out he jumped off the back pulled him to the ground so that right there like that's that right there is just to set the, the tone for it you know no, no <laughs> one knows that story I of our close friends but uh Yo, Patty, Patty will throw down. He, he ain't afraid. And that's uh it shows when he boxes, you know, he doesn't, he's, he's not a, he's not a pussy. Like he don't come out there and play it safe. And like the kid likes to get in there and like, uh, he likes to get at it, you know, and his growth has been awesome. You know, from the first fight that I was uh, with him till now, 
you know, huge leaps and bounds. I mean, he was taking it. He, he takes it serious, you mm-hmm. know, like he's waking up every morning at seven and eight, you know, four times, three, four times a week. And he's training in boxing and then going to the gym, doing strength conditioning. And, you know, and then like he's done great, you know, for being an influencer and, and being in the sport for not too long at all. I mean, I think personally, if he, if he would make it even more serious and like, obviously like he's got his whole life and his whole social media career, but like, you know, if he, if he knuckled down and he took it more, I think he could actually box just kind of like how Jake mm-hmm. Paul's doing. Like, let's give it to Jake Paul's boxing. I mean, is he boxing other boxers? Maybe not yet. He will, but he's boxing. He's getting in there and he's doing it and he's training. And Patty's doing the same thing. He's learning, you know? And I think that John Gabbana fight showed, like, he had movement. You know, he looked like he he's stepped in a gym and practiced before, you know? And I think that says a lot because there's a lot of guys, even guys that train, that when they get in there, they look like, oh, my God, you know? And uh, – I think everyone saw in this last fight, regardless of the outcome, I think everyone got to see that, hey, like, kid's legit, you know? Mm-hmm. And that's, you know, that's my opinion on him. I mean, he's, the kid's a stud at everything he does. I mean, I don't know if you ever keep up with this Instagram, but the dude, he's he's basically in a professional bowling league, too. Like, he's oh, really? a crazy, wow. yeah, crazy good bowler, you know? But uh, that's the, you know, it's the type of people I like surrounding myself with, you know, people that are just hungry, don't want to be the best they can be. And, uh, you know, and I'm I'm grateful for the friendship I have with Patty. Mm-hmm. Are you ever going to try your hand in boxing? And like, when could we expect that? Uh, if, if the money is right, goes, I, I goes guess. With, right? goes like same thing. People, I want to see you fight someone good, or I want to see you fight. Listen, show me real money, and then I'll then I'll you know show me some good money, and then I'll fight a good guy. Show me some uh, real money and I'll, I'll step in the boxing ring, you know. That's my brain. That's my health. You see boxers? Come on, man. Like, I'm not trying to sit there and trade punches with someone. Like, I know my nickname's Scrappy and I fight very, like, aggressive. But at the same time, if you notice when I fight, I don't get hit. Like, I don't try to get hit. Like, I'm not, like, inviting it, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so you're, you're taking necks and you're getting checks in the process. Yeah, like man, yeah. But I, if the money was right. I would box. I would, I would do it. But uh, I would also have to practice. You know, I'm not. I don't think I'm a good boxer. Like straight up. Like I ain't gonna lie and be like, oh, my boxing. You know. Yeah. Can I? Can I? But obviously, I can't. You know, I've been training for a while. But to be like, to say that I could just hop in the ring with like a pro boxer right now at my weight. Come on. You know what I mean? That'd be like them trying to say they could step in the MMA. Okay, I double leg them and slam them on their head you know and then it'd be over you know what i mean it's like vice versa yeah. if i went out there they would out point me and batter me to death you know and let's, and let's face it i'm not a point style fighter i throw i throw everything to, to end it with that kick or punch you know so uh-huh. and that's something I'm trying to work on i'm getting that is uh throwing more combos and and not throwing with so much not trying to knock it out with every punch and kick you know just touching them more you know, because I know, you know, I, I try not to do a lot of wasted movement. If you notice when I fight, when I throw, it's precise and it's, you know, not a lot, but it's it's heavy. But uh, I'm trying to move a little bit and switch it up just to evolve as a fighter. Not because I think I need it so much to, you know, win fights or anything. I just think it's it'll help me, you know, just grow. Mm-hmm. For sure, for sure. Then, you know. St. Louis, going back to your fight, you're in St. Louis. Uh, who's going to be in your corner, and uh, is your family going to attend the fight? So my sister is actually out of the country in Mexico. She won't get back. Um, so my sister won't. My little brother, who I'm with right now, Lucas, come over and say what up. My little, this is my dog. Uh, he's only uh, he's only turning 18. He's so he's 17 hey, Lucas, right now. How's it going? Nice to meet you, bro. So he. Uh, <laughs> uh so he can't unfortunately come i was thinking about trying to sneak him in but uh yeah, just so put him I, in like a suitcase or something you know just roll, yeah, roll in. Yeah. yeah but uh i think my, my my pops is gonna be there and uh my aunt and maybe my grandma i'll have some family there you know i didn't uh the fight's so short notice not anybody really knows about it and i didn't want to put it out there because i'm not trying to have people bothering me about it asking for tickets and i, I just wanted to focus on just take the short notice fight go in there you know, boom, boom, do my shit, get out. But, uh, 
Yeah, man. I'm gonna have a uh, my one of my teammates, one of my really uh, good friends, Evan Elder. He's gonna. Ooh, Evan's uh, the man. Evan's the man. Yeah, Evan's a great guy. Uh, shout out to Evan. Just went six and zero, twenty second KO. Um, you know about the fight December tenth for FAC for the title. Just got announced like today. So shout out to my dog Evan and uh, actually Patty and uh, his manager Mills are gonna fly in and Patty's gonna be in my corner with Evan. So I'm gonna go out there and uh, we're gonna we're gonna go get the job done. Yeah, that's a good team to have behind you. And uh, I think that's all the questions I have. I just want to thank you again for the time. Is there anything that you want to say to the fans out there watching? Oh, Chris, man, thanks for having me, bro. Yeah, no problem, man. It's always uh, a pleasure to talk to you. But, uh, uh, yo, stay tuned. I know I fell short on the Ultimate Fighter, guys, but I'm telling you, I'm going to be back better than ever. I'm going to end this year with two more fights this weekend. And then in December 4th, I'm going to come back to Shamrock FC and fight again. And you know what? I'm going to start the year next year, 7-0. and I'm calling it now. And I'm going to have a breakout year next year. Next year is going to be my year. I'm going to take off. And the world is going to really get to see uh, what Scrappy's about. Awesome, I'm my third man. person. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Justin. I appreciate it. And uh, best of luck on this Saturday. Uh, Chris, I, I appreciate it, man. And shout out to MMA Island. Always support me. You know, they always got my back. Spon help sponsor me for the fight. Got them on my banner. I appreciate you guys so much. Tell the rest of the team I said thank you. And, Chris, I'll talk to you soon, bro. Awesome. Thanks, Justin. Appreciate it. Yeah,